So this is the Kai Wheats KM602. It is what they call pocket size multimeter, and it is relatively small. A couple things to talk about. Your probes go in the bottom here. And uh, I don't see these labeled for anything in particular, but it is an auto-sensing, auto-ranging multimeter. So I guess that you're going to use this one for certain measurements like voltage, uh, continuity, diode resistance, stuff like that. And uh, you would plug in over here if you were measuring current or amperage. I'm assuming that's how that's going to work. Uh, pretty basic thing. There is no bail, so you can't stand this up, but uh, it would lay flat on your table like this. Over here, we do have a couple of buttons, select and function. So let's see what uh, what they do. And select... Let PCBWay.com be your partner on your next project. Regardless of what you need, PCBWay.com has a quote system that will allow you to get quotes for PCBs, PCB assemblies, CNC machining, 3D printing, and a host of other things. If you have questions or need support, PCBWay.com makes that easy. Just reach out to them and somebody will get right back to you. PCBWay.com services don't just stop with manufacturing. You can check out their module store and find any tools or components that you need to make your project a success. So we do have a couple of buttons here, select and function. Let's see what happens if we press function. And then function would allow me to switch through different settings. So here we are on DC voltage. Um, what happens if I hit, all right, if I hit the, the select button, it changes to AC, DC, AC, DC. Hit the function again, and now I am on ohms. And then select doesn't do anything. This would be our continuity test. What I'm noticing is, is that when you change your function, it will tell you which input to use. So here's our microvolts. Here is hertz. Here is capacitance. Here is diode temperature, and it comes set on centigrade. We're in America, and we use freedom units. Hmm. That is AC current and tells me to move my lead. Let's go back to where we were for temperature. On this side, I've got a max and min. So this is if I want to record my maximum or minimum hold. And then it looks like we have a flashlight. I press and hold and that flashlight comes on. Um, I wanted to see if I could change this. Maybe I press and hold this in. Nope. Well, I'm a dummy. It looks like I can't figure out how to change it to Fahrenheit. Oh, well, we'll test that out later. And then I can come down here, and we have a non-contact voltage setting. So it's all pretty standard stuff kind of packed into this small form factor. All right, we're back to the temperature measurements. And maybe I'm a dummy because I was looking down here and seeing that this says 21 degrees Celsius. Here's your Fahrenheit reading up at the top. And the K-type thermal couple seems like it works. If I hold this, it goes up. If I take it off, it goes down, and it's about 70 degrees in this room, so I think that we're good. I do want to note, if I press the function button and go to a different setting, here it displays the temperature in Celsius, and I cannot figure out how to switch that to Fahrenheit. It is what it is. Also, at the top of this is a port that I didn't talk about earlier, and that is where you would plug in your cable that comes with it to charge this device. It has a lithium iron battery inside, at least I believe it's lithium iron, and then also we have our power button up top right here. We have the meter in auto mode. This is a tool that we use to check our multimeters and it is called a DMM check plus digital multimeter check plus. So let's just go ahead and throw it on here and see if it detects voltage. And so this should be DC and it is calibrated to five volts. Now here we are 5.006. Uh, let's just go ahead and switch it to AC. Okay. Now let's check AC. And this would be 4999, and it's close and probably within spec. We're still on auto mode, so let's just go over here and take a look at resistance. And that is correct. That is 100 kilo ohms. And let's take a look down here, and that is correct at 1 kilo ohm. And this should be around 100 ohms, and it's saying 102.8. So the auto function works, and it appears to work pretty well. Let's just go into manual and here we are in manual and this is looking for DC voltage. So let's go back and switch over to DC voltage and we're good. Let's go back and switch it to AC voltage and AC voltage looks pretty good. Let's go up one more into 
ohms and just check that again or check resistance. 100, we're good. One kilo ohm, we're good. And it's taking its time sorting it out. It's a little high, but that's probably within spec. Let's check continuity real quick and see what we get. So you can hear the audible beep when we have continuity here. Let's uh, find a component to test. So here is just a little SMA connector, and this is a through connector. So we should have continuity across the shield. And we do. And then we should have continuity across the center conductor. And we do. Okay, we are set up to measure frequency. And so the DMM check plus has got a 50 hertz duty cycle. So if I go over here and I put this on here, and you can see that uh, we are at 50% at 100 hertz, and that's exactly right. Okay, we're set up to measure capacitance, and we have the DMM check plus, and we're set for one microfarad. So let's come over here and get a measurement. It just ranged to microfarad, and it's 1.090, and that's probably within spec. Let's see, we get 0.1 microfarad, and this is going to give us our reading in nanofarads. 0.01 microfarads, there we go, and then 0.001 microfarads, and there we go. Close. Okay, right here you can see we are measuring one milliamp of DC current, which is the spec for the DMM Check Plus. Uh, I have this set for DC and I have this set for DC. Let's go ahead and switch this over to AC. And I'm going to switch this up to AC. And I'm going to turn this off and turn it back on because sometimes it doesn't like that switch. And let's go over here and test. And it's going to take a second to sort out. And there we go, one milliamp. Perfect. Okay, even though this has non-contact voltage and we just saw it work, it's not something that I would trust. If your non-contact voltage doesn't let you know that there's energy there, there still could be. It's not just this multimeter, it's any multimeter. I'm not really a big fan of non-contact voltage. That said, you can pick this meter up for about 50 bucks. I'll have some links to product pages below where you can look at them and get uh, more specifications if that's what you want to do. I also have some discount codes on shipping, uh, I think from the Kiwi store, and then a discount from Amazon should you choose to purchase one of these things. Anyhow, that's really it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.